Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first, let me explain to you why we're in Wayne. Um, when we started uh, late this summer doing our reform town hall meetings, we wound up doing 17 of them uh, between late August and uh, up till just last week. Uh, we started talking about these issues, the toolkit issues and the other reform issues that face our state. And so we thought that when um, signing what I think is the most significant uh, individual bill in the toolkit uh, bill that I hope, the toolkit that I hope we continue to get passed and considered, um, that we come back to where we started in talking about the need for reform of our property tax system um, in the state. And so that's why we're here in Wayne today. I know Assemblyman Romano thought it was because it's his hometown. But you know, it's not all about you, Scott. So um, <laughs> that's why we're here in Wayne today. It's just an extra added bonus that it's uh, Assembly Romano's hometown. I want to thank all of the municipal officials who are standing behind me. Uh, you know, we could not have understood this problem as well as we have, and we could not have come to the solution that we've come to without the guidance and the counsel and the support of our local elected officials, the ones who are on the front lines dealing with the property tax problems each and every day. And so uh, I wanna thank all the mayors and council people who are here, uh, Republicans and Democrats, for their extraordinary bipartisan support of this effort. We couldn't have done it without you and you deserve great congratulations and I thank you very much. Uh, next, I wanna thank Senator Sweeney and you'll hear from Senator Sweeney momentarily. Um, but uh, you know, We've proven, I think, over the course of the last year uh, that uh, Republicans and Democrats can get things done together. Um, as is well documented, we don't always agree on everything. But we agree on a lot of things. And we also agree that it's our job to compromise when we need to, to get things done for the people of the state. So this bill that I signed today, now a law, um, does not represent everything that I wanted and it certainly doesn't represent everything that Senator Sweeney wanted either. But what we know is that we both were elected with an obligation to serve the public and to come up with the best ideas we can and to compromise in those areas where we need to and where we think we can without compromising our principles in order to accomplish things for the people that we serve. And there's any number of examples of where we've been able to do that together over the course of the last year. And uh, I handed him one of the pens I signed this with because truly the bill would not have been possible without his leadership and his uh, support and his willingness to continue to talk when other people thought we were talked out. So, Senator, thank you very much for your support. <laughs> These issues have been being discussed for quite some time and uh, decades, in fact, and in the years prior to my arriving in Trenton in this past January, uh, they've been discussed in some great detail, not only by Senator Sweeney, but also by Senator Kane and Assemblyman DeCroach. And both Senator Kane and Assemblyman DeCroach played an integral role in making this happen. Uh, they brought the views, they're not only their own, but the views of the Republican caucus uh, in both houses to bear in the negotiations that we had with the Democrats in the Senate and the Assembly. Uh, they very clearly uh, express their principles and their views on these issues and the importance to the municipalities that they serve uh, that something be done to reform the property tax system in our state. And so I want to thank Senator Kane and Assemblyman DeCroach as well um, for their leadership and their friendship. Uh, they have done an, an excellent job leading these, uh, these caucuses and I want to thank Tom and Alex for their support and their hard work. Uh, this is meaningful, this is meaningful reform. I think if I had told uh, most of these mayors uh, in January uh, of this past year uh, that by the end of 2010, we would have a meaningful hard cap on the property tax levy and a meaningful hard cap on interest arbitration awards that would be awarded to municipal employees and county employees, that they probably would have told me I was crazy. Um, they've been yelling and screaming for these kind of reforms for years. Uh, their, their requests have been falling on deaf ears uh, and they needed to have folks who were gonna advocate for them. The folks that you see up here uh, are the folks who advocated for them and with them to get these reforms and they're meaningful ones. Um, 
it's, it mirrors the tax cap levy, as I said, which I think is important, a 2% levy cap, a 2% interest arbitration cap that represents fairness um, in our system. Um, no exceptions for additional non-salary economic terms moving forward. And so, uh, you know, smart lawyers and conniving arbitrators uh, can't create new non-economic terms as a way of going around the 2% cap. Uh, it eliminates the accruing labor costs uh, through an elongated arbitration process by setting real, fast, and hard deadlines for the arbitration process. From the time the contract is over, as soon as one of the parties files for arbitration, that arbitration award must be issued and completed within 45 days. No longer will we have years and years, and you know we've seen examples of three and four and five year uh, arbitration cases. All the time, additional expenses accruing um, to the municipality based on the old contract. Uh, this will take away the incentive for delay. Um, one of Senator Sweeney's particular ideas in this which was very helpful and, and one that I was happy to adopt and endorse was capping arbitrator pay uh, at no more than $1,000 a day and no more than $7,500 for the entire case. So no longer will it be in the arbitrator's interest to delay and elongate a case in order to enrich themselves. Uh, arbitrations are now going to become a volume business if you want to make them your business. Um, this bill also increases the ethical training and standards for arbitrators to make sure uh, as best we can that we have only the best and most ethical people making these very important decisions. For the first time, it, random, it, it makes random the selection of these arbitrators. And so no one is going to be putting their thumb on the scale to try to get an arbitrator who's treated them well before or treated one of the parties poorly before. Um, all these reforms will take effect um, now in 12 days. And we are going to sunset this bill in August, or, or rather April, of 2014. And uh, we're doing that because we want to give this an opportunity to work, fair opportunity to work. And then we have set up a commission with appointees from both uh, my office um, and the legislature in order to evaluate how well this is working, how fair it is, and to make recommendations by December 31 of 2013 to the governor and to the legislature on ways that the cap may need to be changed um, or in, uh, the good things that are happening from it, why it should continue to be in place. Uh, this gives everyone a reasonable time to evaluate it and a deadline to work, and I think we all work better when we have deadlines. Um, uh, this task force will also ensure that the implementation of this is responsible and fair. And so the bill represents, I think, the bringing together of lots of different ideas. And, uh, and uh, I will, um, I'm happy to have signed it today. Uh, we're happy to have helped to lead the debate to get this kind of thing done. And I know that I see a lot of relieved mayors. We took it right to the end, didn't we? Um, uh, with uh, 11 days to go before your cap comes into effect. Um, but this and other aspects of the toolkit, um, we're gonna continue to work on to make sure that you are all fully armed um, to deal both fairly with your employees and responsibly on behalf of your taxpayers. So uh, let me um, introduce the Senate President for some remarks. Uh, and then I'll introduce Senator Kane and Assemblyman DeCroach for remarks as well, and then we'll come back and I think we'll all be available for questions.